was there. Um, I posted one live about an hour ago, but I had to make another track because I gotta get y'all to y'all feelings. Shit serious, shit real. So um, I really want to just break it down, you know, what's going on behind the murder rates and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? The high murder rates, why crime gotta stay up. It's a plan, it's a program, you know what I'm saying? This what they this what they got for us, this all they ever had for us. I've been on the planet 44 years and this what it's been, you know, since I was a kid the murder rate was high. So like it ain't it ain't got nothing to do with um it ain't got nothing to do with us and what we got going. It's part of the whole program, this whole this part of the whole plan. So I'm gonna break it down a little bit. Um I don't know. Check out the music right quick, though. Some new shit I just did just now. You know what I'm saying? Y'all check it out. Give me a second. So, we gonna get with it. Yeah. So, what's the spiritual reason behind this whole thing? You know? They playing a hell of a game on us. You know what I'm saying? The powers that be, they playing a hell of a game. This shit all by design. This by program. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I talked about, you know, how, you know, they use the images and the TV and the radio and all of the entertainment stuff to program us on how we think. You know what I'm saying? Program us on how we think, how we react. Because they know if they control how we think, they know what we're going to do already. They know if they show it to us on the TV, they give it to us on the radio over and over again, repetition. Then they know what we're going to do. They, it's not a, it's not a it's something that they are, it's, it's a spiritual reason. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, the murder rate is crime, right? It's based off of crime. It's based off of how, you know... Capitalism, you know what I'm saying, is based off money. And so, what I'm getting at is that, you know, they use that because they get paid a lot of money to fight crime. You know what I'm saying? The biggest, the biggest budgets of the of even the federal government is the fucking prison system. You know what I'm saying? It takes up like I think a fourth of the prison of the uh, federal budget. The prison system, the federal prison system. And so they got this thing called a uh, school to prison pipeline. Go Google it, look it up. And so what the school to prison pipeline is, is that it's saying that if you live in a certain zip code, not area code, zip code, if you live in a certain zip code, they already know that a high rate, a high percentage of the people in that zip code are gonna wind up going to prison, like 90, 80, 90%. So just understand what's going on. Hey friend, how you doing? Um, so it's a high, it's, it's all a part of the plan. Like, how do they know that if I live, if I grow up, they don't even know me. Like, how, how, how the hell they know if I grow up in this certain zip code, I'm going to go to prison. Like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? So that means that if y'all know this, y'all should be putting in some type of plan to get me out of that zip code or to even, like, give incentives, you know what I'm saying, on, you know, these people and how to, um, on these people and how to, you know, help them get out of this condition that they in, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say poverty, but I'm gonna say poor, right? I mentioned before that, you know, um, poor people are, is anybody who make less than $56,000 a year, you know what I'm saying? That's the average median income of every household. So if you, if you make less than $56,000 a year, you poor, you know what I'm saying? And so what they do is, they got the poor against the middle class. You know, the middle class don't want to get nothing to the poor because the middle class ain't going to get nothing. You know, it's less stuff for them, you know what I'm saying? And so, like, it's a whole game that they use. They, they, they playing both ends against the middle. 
And so what this school to prison pipeline does, it, it just shows that, you know, we got this whole thing figured out. You know what I'm saying? And we sit back and we be like, well, hey man, oh, it's a whole lot of crime. Let's give more money to the police. Let's give more money to this. Let's give more money to the judges. That's what you're doing. You, every time you say, let's give more money because we need to fight crime, you these people are at literally, and they're already the police and the, and the crime fighting whole, whole um, element that whole thing, they getting paid off of us. They getting paid off of crime, but they know that if you live below a certain uh, earning or a certain wage, they know you gonna it's gonna be crime in that area. You know what I'm saying? They know that if if you living in poverty or if you poor, it's gonna be crime in them poor people. It's a crab in the barrel mentality because everybody trying to get out the barrel, out the crab barrel. So we still fighting against each other, pulling each other down, trying to get out. You know what I'm saying? Trying to make more money, trying to break. You breaking the law to get money. That, these people ain't out here breaking the law because that's what they want to do. Somebody told me today that you know drug dealing is the easy way out. You know what I'm saying? It's the easy. It's not the easy way out. You got killers. You got police. You got jackers. You got all type of people. You know what I'm saying? You got to be up from sun up to sundown. So that job is actually harder then just going to a regular job you know what i'm saying but the reason why people do it is because they that's all you see when you walk outside your door most young black men the most successful people they gonna see every day is the drug dealer period that's who they gonna see they gonna see him he got the money he got the clothes he got the the, the cars and everything else the women you know what i'm saying so like so i mean if that's all you see every day, these are, you don't see doctors, you don't see lawyers, you don't see all these, you know, uh, people, these business people every day you walk outside. You might have to go to their business to see them. You don't see doctors, you know what I'm saying? You see drug dealers. So, of course, that's who you're going to relate to because these the mo this who you see the most. So, poverty is, is strictly tied to, because you got to understand this, right? If they got these big-ass budgets... They got these super incredible multi-million dollar budgets to fight crime, but they don't have no budgets to literally get you out of crime too. And I, I go talk to the mayor and them. I say, look, man, why don't y'all try to implement trade schools or something like that? Why they won't do it? Because it costs money. You know what I'm saying? You can give money to the police to fight the crime, but you can't give the money to the people who actually, who are victims of the crime or who actually live in these crime riddled areas you don't get no money to these people and the thing is is this as long as we down here and oh they them drug dealers oh they they jackers they killers they robbers they do this they do that we even demonize these people and i'm not saying that this, we supposed to glorify them and look up to them but why are they doing it that's the question nobody never asked themselves why we doing it or why they do it you know what i'm saying why people just go out and break the law you know what i'm saying why people go out and you know want to want to live that type of lifestyle that's a that's a hell of a lifestyle to live nobody make an easy choice on taking that lifestyle but when you got to go to this job and work these eight hours these 10 hours and then you only made shit 60 dollars today 80 dollars today even 150 or 60 dollars you still in poverty you know what i'm saying i make 17 dollars an hour i'm still in poverty you know what i'm saying i'm still not in the middle class you know what i'm saying so you actually literally have to i can't say that you can't dig your way out you can't find your way out you can't work your way up yeah you could do that but if all i see is just like i'm gonna put it like this right and it's just a scenario Say I walk out, I see this apple tree, right? And I want to pick this apple, boom. I reach up, I get the apple that's closest to the ground. I ain't going to reach and go to the top of the tree. You know what I'm saying? Now I said it take more work, it take more effort, it take more energy to get to the top of that tree to get that golden apple. But if I'm already on the bottom and I see this apple right here, boom, I'm going to pluck it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what they're doing to us with the crime. We don't have no political representation. We don't have no money going to no politicians to pay them to represent us. You know what I'm saying? All we do is go out and we vote for these people thinking that they got our best interests at hand. These are the same people who are giving millions and millions and millions of dollars to the police. And I'm not demonizing the police. I'm not, we do need the police because crime is gonna be crime. We do need, you know, everything we got, the, the judges and the prosecutor, we need all that. But at the end of the day, why, why if we're the most drug riddled neighborhoods, why we don't have drug treatment centers in our neighborhoods? Answer that question. 
why they ain't free? We the most, they say we doing all this drug stuff. We on, we on drugs more than anybody else. Why ain't no drug places in the community where people could go and clean themselves up in the community, ran by people in the community? Because they don't want to get that over to the people because that costs money. They have to give the people in the community money now. They not giving you no money. That's a part of the plan, not to give us nothing. And I don't know why people, it's so hard for people to see. These people don't have nothing good for us. And even our people who look like us, they in there too. Understand this. Well, most of these politicians get in there, yeah, they want to get in there and do a good job. But if you got billion dollar people coming to you, telling you, hey man, shit, I got, and it ain't nothing sinister about it. It ain't nothing illegal about it. If you vote for this, I want you to go in and we want to build this, you know, a uh, chemical plant in the middle of the neighborhood, in the middle of the black neighborhood. We want to build it because they won't let us build it nowhere else. It got to be in the city somewhere. Since we don't have no representation, we can't use our money to fight that. We can't get lawyers and do all this legal process to fight that. So they'll get in and they'll pay these people, these politicians, just for one vote, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000. That's why most politicians who get in office, these politicians don't be rich. But when they get out, they be rich, rich. Because these 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 millionaires and these billionaires are paying them to do their work, do their bid and to vote this stuff in for them. You know what I'm saying? And by us just sitting back and letting it go down and we don't really care about the vote. We don't really care about the local elections. We don't really care about the stuff going on in the city. We don't vote in that stuff. That's how this stuff get passed through. And before we know it, it's just a big chemical treatment plant, water treatment plant, some type of stinky chemicals in the air all day in our neighborhoods. And that should be killing us. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we have this thing about the government ain't going to do nothing to us. Deep down inside, we know that the government don't have our best interests at heart. They never have. Just looking at the reality, looking at the facts. These people do not have our best interests at heart. You know what I'm saying? But we still go and vote them in <clears throat> because we feel like, you know, well, that's just the, both of them ain't going to do nothing. So I'm just going to vote my favorite guy in. You know what I'm saying? That's just like going for, you know, and we look at it like this. Well, I'm a Cowboy fan. You're a Saints fan. I don't care what. I'm going to go with the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if they lose a million times and I put all my money on this. I'm still going to go with the Cowboys. You know what I'm saying? You want to join, Nick? Nick, you want to join, boy? Let me see what you got going. You sure could get in. What you got going, boy? Say his name, you Nick. Come my boy. Come on in here. Where you at, Nick? Damn, is he letting me in? You there, Nick? What's up with the homie? What's up, fam? What you got going? Uh, I'm chilling, man. What's going on? You, I see you up here enlightening them, huh? Yeah, you hear me, man. I'm all here just trying to give them some, give them some knowledge they can use. You know what I'm saying? Not damn right. It don't stop even after them bars. I see you still, boy. You let your heart. Yeah, That's all right. Yeah, what you got? Um, that, that's the studio. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, my home, little home studio, my little home set up. That's all right, man. That's what I'm talking about, continuing the um, the mission, even after them bars. You said you was going to do that, too. Oh, yeah, I was doing it before. I know it. Say, your son's still doing it? Oh, yeah, I got two sons who in it. I know it. I remember the Out the Way Boys. Yeah, OTW. I forgot. Yeah, the Way Boys. You're damn right. <laughs> Say, man. Do me a favor, in which I posted about that tonight, man. Look here. Their name is Out The Way Boys for a reason, because I don't know what's going on, man. I feel like, you know, when these youngsters now sign these hip-hop contracts, man, it's like part of the clauses, man. At some point, you either damn near going to get killed or get killed, man. This shit crazy. I see. Man. I they, see. It's, it's crazy. I don't understand it, man. I'm talking about this shit is damn near like an epidemic, man. It's like shit, five or six young hip hop artists getting killed a year now. Oh yeah, more than that. Yeah. This is it's ill. And what and, and then, you know, 
we know the psychological trip they got out here. Any young black artist that shit, all they got to do is lay down one bar. They automatically name the rapper. So in the tabloids and in the media, it's saying rapper was killed. And shit, maybe nobody but local individuals around him knew who they were. But just so they can put the issue, push the issue about a rapper getting killed, they automatically put that in a tabloid. Rapper getting killed. They could have just said shit. They do what they normally do. Another black man killed. Well, you know, it's their thing to boost it up. You know, it's, look at them niggas. Them niggas are always killing each other. Them niggas are always doing it. Even when they get on the top, them niggas still be killing each other because you have to understand, just because you pluck one or two out the crowd, bro, the rest of them still lying there. The rest of them still hungry. The rest of them still greedy. They ready to eat. If they got to use that thing to eat, they going to use that thing to eat. It doesn't even matter. Man, 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 man. Oh, oh hold on. You know something? What? Was was you at Texas County when that boy Rico was there? I'm not sure. You remember Rico? Rico um, he, huh? Remember Rico used to? Uh, he used to be one of the barbers in the barber shop. I don't remember. Okay, hold on. All right, he used to work HVAC. Um, was on the RDAP side. Called himself Panamanian in black. They called him Rico Rodriguez Holt. He was a Texas. He was a Texas counter with us. I think he was. Um, I think he was there when he was there. Uh, he was one of the dudes I used to work out with. Kind of. He was black, but kind of had the curly hair. Used to be in a barber shop. Used to be in a barber shop. Um, early morning Saturdays and shit. Only. <laughs> I don't remember that straight out. I just can't picture his face. But yeah, you, you know, huh? I said his name sound familiar. Oh yeah, they called him Rico. He was a Texas candle with us. Man, you know, I don't know if I told you, but he got killed in April. And well? In April. He got killed in Birmingham. I, I don't know. I think you did mention that to me though. I'm trying to see if okay. You you on Facebook? Just go 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 on um, Rodriguez Holt, and I, I guarantee you you will recognize him. And, and, and you yeah, know it's just it's just ill the shit I'm finding out of why he got killed, man. That's that's some ill shit. A, a person close to him put that bag on his head, bro, and they, and they killed him. Crazy, all well, over some, <laughs> over some huh? The only people that can get to you is the people that know you, the people that's close to you. And that's what happened. Hold on. And, and, and you know the O2 common tale of a nigga getting killed over abroad. Abroad put that bag on his head. Crazy. And I'm just finding this out because for the longest, shit, we didn't know how he got killed. You know, I'm like, man, then my, uh, one of my partners that I was locked up there with was close to him called and told me because you know he talked to him a lot and he talked to his family he was cool with him like that and his family ended up telling him man yeah person close to him i ain't you know we kind of live right now so i ain't finna you know but i will just say it like this a female put a bag on his head man and and and, and the nigga came and got him. crazy man and and didn't get nothing didn't get nothing from it end up turning himself in because you know, that dude was pretty connected. Crazy, man. Crazy. Mm. That's real life, bro. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you knew Big Nunk, too. I know you big, I knew, I know you knew Big Nunk. Or, yeah, you knew Big Nunk. Nunk used to go to roster services with us. <laughs> that name don't sound familiar. Randall Gotch, big tall nook. Um, used to go come to roster service with us from I Lafayette. From Lafayette. Big, big tall motherfucker. No, big. Was dice, from Lafayette when I was there. You say yeah, Dice. Now, now the dude that was cool with Dice. You 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 might have what did what did you leave? 
Uh, I think I left February the 17th, 2017, or February the something, February the 3rd or something, 2017. Well, you didn't leave before you le you didn't leave before Dice left, did you? Okay, then you know him because he was there when Dice before Dice left. Ball headed, tall and bright skinned, looked almost white. We called him Nunk. I remember him. Damn, I came. Yeah, he, he came to roster services with us though. But anyway, shit, he that that man died on the shitter, bro. Hurt my heart. Because we rolled that time out. He got released a couple of months before me. Crazy, man. It's just niggas dying. Man, I've lost, I swear, I've lost about five or six homies since I done been home. Niggas kidding. We niggas getting. Yesterday, you know. There's some shit going on down here every day, bro. Well, you, you in the port? Yeah. You run into bro, man? Yeah. No, I ain't seen him since I've been home. Yeah, I can okay. go to work and come home, bro. Do I? Goddamn right. Best thing to do. Show. For real. <laughs> I'm in New Mexico right now. <laughs> Shit, on that low. Man, look, driving through them mountains for goddamn six hours, bro. I'm. I, I just. Um. I'm in a hotel right now. I just went downstairs to the uh, fitness gym. You know. To work out since they got a fitness room here. So, you no know, work out, man. For take me a shower and take it to the house. I got a load to drop off in the morning. Then I got to pick up a load in um, Amarillo and take it back before work. So, trying to get it. Hey. Congratulations on owning your own shit, bro. Getting out of doing your own thing, being your own boss, bro. I'm going to touch on I get Yeah, I'm going to touch on all that. Man, I'm just trying to implement the stuff that we talked about, bro. That's it. Man. Man, hey, hey. it's tough, though, but uh, who? Yeah. I, did I, I, I talked to Sky a couple of times. Yeah. I, hold on. This was. Hold on. This is the trip part about it. I'm at Amazon loading up my shit one night, and I'm walking, and I look. I say, hold on, man. Scott, he was up in Amazon at the same time as I was. Ran into that nigga uh, at the Amazon in uh, near Austin. Like, damn, boy, it's yeah, a small-ass world. Yeah, he, he from Austin. He, he was up in there uh, with his partner, because uh, his partner was, you know, he was at the point he was, uh, his partner was schooling him, getting ready to put him on. You know? I thought that was cool. So, you know, yeah, yeah, this man, thing real out here, man. I appreciate that, man, but I'm glad to see you doing what you wanted to do, man, with that music, man. I see the uh, boards in the background and everything. Still making yeah, them beats. Yeah, yeah, I've been getting it in. I just made it in town. Yeah, Rick, say, I still be crate digging, dog. <laughs> I still got a whole bunch of obscure tracks. Huh? I was making them beats in there. They don't know, but I was making beats in there when we was in prison in the bed. I in the remember. I remember. I would come up in that. <laughs> I remember. Shit. Man. Godly, bro. I, I, I'm i telling you, Twan, I ain't gonna even lie, man. You could have told. Huh? Say, say that again. I say, I'm gonna hit say that again. I'm gonna get back to this because I'm trying to. Huh? Yeah, that's what time it is, man. I'm gonna just take a shower with man, take it to the house for a second, bro. I was just hitting you up because I seen you live. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate what you added too, man. These niggas dying out here, bro. Every day, bro. Like it ain't nothing hey. new. You know what I'm saying? It's, that's what that's what's going on, and they love that. They love to see kill each other, bro. Man, it's a part of the program. God, it's, the it, it's so it's so sad, man. I, I, you know, my lady called me and told me while I was on that truck. I was like, Young Dolph. I was like, Damn, man. 
that boy, um, Soldier Boy, was just going off on him about you know being independent, about him being independent, and Young Dolph not. Then all of a sudden, shit, this nigga didn't got popped in Memphis, dog. I don't, man, yeah. shit. If I was coming up in this area, yeah, nigga, I'd be stuck, huh? Mo three was on the same label that Young Dolph was on. Uh, Young Dolph and uh that other boy. Um, uh, I'm thinking they talk. I think they said uh the boy that got. Don't tell me smoke. Don't Atlanta, tell me pop no. smoke. King Von. Pop smoke. Uh, King Von. King Von. All three of them yeah. On the same label, bro. And they had their own masters. They owned their masters, bro. Empire. They was on Empire. And they owned their own masters, yeah. bro. And they took all three of them out. Damn. Lucius Lyons came and got their shit, huh? Most, yeah. Most. <laughs> boy, hey, young Dolph and uh, King Von. All three of them was on the same label. Empire. They all did. Man. They all owned their own. Too. That's what they had in common, bro. These people ain't playing. Man. To get that back. That bag back. You know the family gonna sell it. They ain't trying. They ain't trying to catch another Michael Jackson out here, huh? That's crazy. Michael Jackson not only on his mouth, he owned it all type. He owned it Sony, like ninety percent of Sony records. Yes, sir. Yeah. Fucking video that's up on the Sony PlayStation. Oh shit, Michael Jackson, man. They had to get him out of here. Man. Man. Say, before you go, dog, my lady uh, was running something by me, man, about, you know, possibly doing some podcast shit, man. We ought to do that shit because combined, bro, we got a lot that we can talk and bless some folk with, you know, because people just really ain't understanding, dog. They really not knowing what's getting ready to come as a result of all this so-called social media, I mean, not social media, this social distancing, this uh, this COVID shit, man, they do not know. They about, they about five years off from seeing the remnants of all this social distancing, all of this uh, lackadaisical time of not going to school, all this half-ass education, everything that's came, that everything that's coming out of the 20, 21 period 20 with well, 2020 and 2021 20, period man they haven't even seen the effects of it yet they just tripping off of going through this shit right now but they ain't seen how the generations that's between i say five and 15 is about to be affected in these next five years dog it's gonna be fucking ill out here dog it's gonna be ill in a bitch we got to talk about that because I need you to put me on. It's I just look that far dealing with that. It's just the fact that you know, you know how okay, you got uh what they call baby boomers and all of these different generations that be affected by something cataclysmic that happened during that time and how it's like sort of offset or uh, a delayed response. We about to get ready to catch a delayed response from all of this shit that we've been dealing with, man. Look how ill it is now. And imagine how these children that's growing up in this shit right now and absorbing all of this shit is going to start interacting and um, acting out in society. Because people reaching out, but they ain't got nobody to reach up and grab them, man, because they don't know that the very individuals that they reaching out for help are the ones that's causing the problem. How can you expect your oppressor to save you? This shit crazy in the bitch out here, man. It's gonna, it's gonna be ill. I think about my nephew right now that's nine years old, bro. I'm talking about just the shit. Just okay, COVID is so ingrained in our in our um vocabulary today, it's like well, what is gonna be when it get downplayed and you get the next issue that come out because of how this COVID so-called pandemic or pandemic then affected them, man. It's all, it's like, okay, we, I remember us talking, and I'm gonna let you go. I remember us talking one night about, you know, assassinations. And it's not so much as the assassin's bullet that's effective in society. It's 
the psychological effect left on the people that's mourning for the dude that was killed. You know, that was done with intention. It's like a message like, that dude over there, he dead. Do you want to be him? Because see, the person mm -hmm. that got killed, they have nothing else to worry about. It's the people his, that's, that, that they consider the loved ones. So that's how they control the crowd. You know, they, they mm -hmm. silence Malcolm X because of the effect of the people. You know, not just because they didn't like Malcolm X. They didn't want the people affected by what he was saying. It's never about the assassinated. It's about the loved ones. So right now, it ain't so much as what we're dealing with with COVID or the pandemic or the social distancing. It's how they going to start interacting with society as a result of all that they're dealing with right now while they sponges absorbing all this bullshit that they're dealing with on a daily basis. Got to worry about getting vaccinated. Got to worry about being at school with a mask. Got to worry about uh, 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 whether they're going to uh, catch COVID coming in contact with somebody else. Man, all of this bullshit that ain't nothing but fear tactics to keep us shrouded in mystery, confusion, and fear. It's fear. But I'm going to let you go, man. Yeah, you take care of your business, man. I'm going to go ahead and take it to the house for the night, man. Talk to my lady, man, and get ready to get this bag, man, and try and stay out the way like your like your little like your sons, bro. I hope they stay stay out the way. They've been doing a good job so far. I hope they keep it up too. Well, bro, like they say, you know, sometimes trouble can come looking for you, but as long as they are aware, they can they can stay two steps ahead, like that old gang star song. Oh yeah. So, you know, I appreciate you. Definitely, man. Salute. Peace. Salute. Violence. All day, bro. All right, bro. Be good. Word. Definitely. I appreciate my bro for coming on, man. Good dude. Good dude, man. I'm going to get back to this, though. So what I was getting at was, like the brother said, man, they creating a problem, then they coming up with the solution. You know what I'm saying? You know, they they, they creating poverty. They they creating, they creating, I ain't going to say poverty, I'm going to say the poor class. They create the poor class, and then the poor class do what they do because they feed you the TV, the negative stuff. They feed you the video game. They feeding all you this negative energy. And then they know what you're going to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Because they put it in your mind every day. So then they come out and solve it with giving more police, more, more prosecuting, crack down on the neighborhood, weed and seed money. They had, they had so many billions of dollars for weed and seed, bro, around the whole country because crime had skyrocketed. But what they didn't tell you at the time was that when they gave them that money, crime had already peaked and was going down. You know what I'm saying? But they still gave them that money. They came through and terrorized the neighborhood. And don't get me wrong, the shooting and the violence, it was up then, but it's up now. So ain't none of that stuff worked. And y'all still doing the same thing. You ain't came up with no alternative plans. Once you see something don't work, you come up with a different plan. And the plan is, it ain't no plan for you. They ain't got no plan for you. No matter who you pick, they ain't got no plan for you. Because they get paid to come in at these budgets. They don't want to cut the budget. They don't want to cut the budget. You know, we oh, we need these police cars. We need this. We need new guns. We need new training. We need new that. We need all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not rallying against the stuff that they need to, you know, do what they need to do because they do they do serve a good purpose. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, why y'all not giving no money to these same people to go to school and get a trade for they can be a boss for themselves because you don't want to be a boss for themselves. If I had a, tr a trade in building houses, framing houses, I never sell dope. If I had a train for electrician, I don't see electricians out here selling dope. I don't see plumbers out here selling dope. I don't see concrete masons and brick masons out here selling dope. You know what I'm saying? Because they make enough money doing that that they ain't in poverty no more. So the reason they won't give it to you is because you didn't pay for it. It's the same reason they don't give you money. You know, you know, that's the same reason you're not certified, certified in no skills. No trades when you come out of high school. You just did 12 years and you ain't certified in nothing. And the reason why is because you didn't pay for it. You got to pay for everything in a capitalistic 
country, in a capitalistic nation. Capitalism, the root word is capital, capitalized. So they capitalizing off of the crime. Tell me I'm lying. These people, judges, prosecutors, DAs, even the jailers living outside of the middle class, even the fucking police above the middle class or somewhere right along in there, these people are actually benefiting and living off of fighting crime that they created. Because you got a whole poverty, a race of people or a nation of people who are in poverty. And I'm not just saying black people in poverty. It's more white people in poverty than black people. You know what I'm saying? But the white people, they have a more family structure. They have a more of a, of a family. You know, they don't have, well, you coming in and giving incentives and housing and food stamps and welfare and this and that that's breaking up. They saying they don't, they don't, they don't take that. They'd rather keep their family and let the government have that shit. You know what I'm saying? They before they break up their family, they they ain't gonna take no money. You know what I'm saying? But black people, we've been so, you know, conditioned against each other. I don't need no man. You know what I'm saying? A nigga ain't shit. You know all these different words or these different ideals or phrases that we use, and this shit get in our mind. I can't trust no, you know, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Ninja. I can't trust nobody. You know what I'm saying? But them people trust each other every day. They doing business with each other every day. That's trust. So they telling us one thing, but then if you look at them, they are doing the exact opposite. And why we can't see that? Why we don't see that these people doing the opposite of what they telling us to do? The white girl ain't running around talking about she don't need no man. The Mexican girl ain't running around talking about she don't need no man. The Italian woman, nobody else running around talking about they don't need no man. Nobody else talking about they don't need a man. Everybody know they need a man. And they fucking, the men are the ones who is running the household. The men, not running the households, but bringing the money into the household. So when you say you don't need that, you cutting off half your money. And you done took them little crumbs they gave you. You know what I'm saying? Now your family, now you don't have a family. Now you don't have a father. Or, or, you know, now these kids don't have their dad. So boom, you, it's, it, they, they program them, bro. So I'm gonna get back to the subject though. So the spiritual reason behind the murder rate is this. The more pressure you put on impoverished people, it's just like this. This is the concept, right? So you go to prison, right? You only got limited food, you only got limited clothes, you only got limited phone calls, you limited in everything you do. You can't you can't even be outside after dark. You can't be outside before dark. I mean, you know what I'm saying, before daylight, you know what I'm saying, you can't be outside. So you're living in a, li a limited structured environment, right? So what these people figured out, or what people in prison figure out, I've seen people in prison boil water in plastic jugs. I've seen people make liquor, you know what I'm saying, in plastic jugs. I've seen people do soap. I've seen people in prison make speakers. This guy who was just on with me, he'll tell you. It was a guy who was in the feds with us. He was making speakers. Hold on. No, that was at a... I was at Fort Worth. We were in Texas County. But he was making speakers out of paper. Paper out of notebook. Speakers. Loud speakers. You know what I'm saying? Not earphone where well, you can play in and the whole... Everybody can hear. You know what I'm saying? In prison. So they understand that pressure makes people get more creative pressure makes diamonds and pressure also busts pipes so spiritually speaking the diamonds that get created you know and i'm speaking on this city right here shreveport louisiana ratchet city you know the nickname you know what i'm saying but this city right here is so much pressure on this city you know what i'm saying the murder rate we like number eight on the murder rate at the murder rate, the top in the top ten, we number eight. You know what I'm saying? And so what they understand is that the more pressure we put on them, the more creative, the more yeah, it's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna get you know fall by the wayside. They're gonna get they're gonna kill each other. They're gonna go to jail. They're gonna do this and do that. But also, guess what they know? This is the only city in the United States of America that had six NFL draft picks come out of that motherfucker this year. This the only city in the United States. We had six people went to the NFL out of this city this year. That's the spiritual science behind it. They know pressure gonna bust a pipe or pressure gonna make a diamond. It's just depending on where you direct your energy, where your mind state is. Is you falling for the game? Is you on some bull BS or is you on, you know what I'm saying, some high power, high vibration? You know what I'm saying? Is your focus over here in the gutter or is your focus over here on getting yourself out the gutter? You know what I'm saying? So that's the spiritual understanding or that's the spiritual reason behind why they keep us down. You know what I'm saying? 
The dude who created the cotton gene, he was a slave. A lot of these people who created most of the stuff we use today, the red light and all type of other stuff, peanut butter and all the stuff, the, the, the sweet potato. These people were in slavery. That's how they created all that. So they know that they got to keep us in a certain, a certain, a certain amount of pressure on us, a certain amount of poverty, a certain amount of strife. Why you think the best music for the last 20, 10, 20 years since Master P now been coming out the South? The best music, the, the top of the charts, everything, the, the greatest Beyonce from Houston. You know what I'm saying? The most, the best music, the best musicians, and this on the spirit, because music is universal. Unit means one. Verse, verse means song, universe. So they know that pressure gonna make better throughout the universe, you know what I'm saying? Through the one song, one vibration. So that's why the best music is kind of set of artists right now is out of Louisiana, out of this state. Give me a young boy. You know what I'm saying? The man went through so much bullshit, so much strife, so much pressure. He made a diamond out of him, even if he's still in that raw, uncut form. And that's what they like, the raw, uncut, real. That's what they're going to put on. They're going to put on the raw stuff. Memphis. All the stuff going on in Memphis today. Young dog. You know what I'm saying? Pressure make diamonds, bro. These people know the science behind this shit. It's spirituality. A lot of people don't want to pay attention. A lot of people ain't tapped into the spirit. But it's a spiritual reason. Pressure make diamonds, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I just said, you know, this the only city, number eight on the murder rate throughout the whole country. And it's only 100,000 people. Here's less than 100,000 people. And we number eight. But we got six NFL players straight out this city this year. Out of this city. So pressure make diamonds and pressure bust pipes. Depends on where your energy go. Where you put it at. Where you trying to go. What you trying to do. It's all on you, bro. So, uh, but like I'm saying, these people built their careers off of fighting crime. These people getting paid millions and billions of dollars a year off fighting crime. They living in the suburbs off fighting crime, bro. They getting big paychecks off fighting crime. Y'all don't get this shit. But what are they giving to the people? What tax money going back to the people to prevent them from committing crimes in the first place? Nothing. They ain't got no budget for that. You go to telling these people that they look at you like you the enemy. I think I'm trying to get y'all some fresh ideas, but they don't want to hear that. Because the powers that be ain't going to put no money toward that. They sucking all the money up. We're not going to go save these niggas. We're not going to put nothing in place to save these dudes. Nothing at all. Nothing. They ain't got nothing for you. Nothing. They building more jails, and not only are they building more jails, they saying we got to keep these jails. These private contractors who own these jails, they said we got to, we got to put it in these contracts that y'all got to keep these jails ninety percent at capacity, meaning that we have to go around and make sure that these jails stay full. What that's telling you, and if they sign off on it, the city government sign off on it, the state government sign off on it. I mean, they finna go through and stay rounding up. I mean, when they first built CCC, they open it up for tours one day. The next day, they open it up for inmates. And the next day, when they open it up for inmates, within that first week, CCC was full. So they went and did warm roundups and went around and everybody up and filled their jail up. They've been filled it full ever since. Y'all don't see this shit? But y'all want to steady blame the kids. Who don't even who are children? Because understand this, from a time from the time a child gets born to the time a child gets 21, these children are 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 children. They kids. They don't have no experience as being an adult. But you'll take a kid and try him as an adult, even though you know his brain ain't fully developed. You know what I'm saying? Just to keep the system. just and, and all the stuff that he got in his brain, in his mind, it came from home and it came from TV. Most of the stuff come from TV, from the music, from the radio, from um, in the church and everything else. But what does that do? The church ain't working in the neighborhood. The church ain't out here doing what Jesus did. The church ain't saving nobody. The people in the church, more likely, already saved. They're not living that life. But why the church ain't going out here and doing what 
Jesus did. Why you can't go and get a $200 electric bill paid from the church? Because they ain't into saving souls. They say that. They ain't taught you nothing about your soul, but you love the church. You love going to church and praising God. <laughs> so what they're doing is increasing these budgets off the crime. They're increasing the laws off of crime. They're making it harsher for your people, and you vote these people in to prosecute you and your people and your children, but they won't give one red penny to saving these kids. Why y'all ain't telling them that? Y'all want them to go to jail too. Your own kids, you want them, or somebody else's kids. Because you don't look at them as your kids or your community. You look at them as somebody else's kids. So you down with it. You down with it. You the same one with throwing rocks at Jesus. You the same dude. Oh, yeah, they say he did this. Bah. Oh, yeah, he blasphemed God. Bah. Oh, yeah, they say he did that. Y'all part of the plan, bro. Because y'all don't get it, man. It's programmed into the system, bro. We teach the kids. And the, the kids go off of what they see on TV. You can make the most hor horrendous movie, scary movie, Jason, Freddy Krueger, killing, 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 killing. And y'all don't say nothing about that. But in the moment of man say something about this or that or this or that, a black person, and I'm not even on the white and black thing, but I'm just saying, this is how y'all got this shit set up, bro. So you can't expect for me to say, oh, yeah, when Steven Seagal kills somebody that's cool, but when a black person kills somebody that's bad, it's all killing. It's all violence. It's all crime. And this all y'all show on TV. This, this all y'all show in sports. Football. He done broke a leg. That's violence. He done cracked an ankle. He done, he done tore a ligament. That is violence from violent impacts of human bodies. That's violence. But every week, Y'all on that cheering for your best team. You you know better just the same thing the Romans did when they were feeding the humans to the lions. Who you think in control now? The Roman Catholic Church. These are the same people who, who, who was over Rome. The Romans. The Romans weren't known but for one thing, killing people. That's all the Romans was known for was killing people. But we down with the Roman Catholic Church. We down with the Pope. We down with the Coliseums because we watch football in the Coliseums over here in America now. They breaking bones, they breaking backs, they breaking necks, they breaking heads. Even the basketball is violence in that. They fight. They breaking legs and tearing ligaments. Just number of violence, bro. And y'all don't even get that. You just entertain. You entertain just like them people who's in Rome getting entertained in them fucking cathedrals watching, you know, wolves eat humans. It's the same thing, bro. It's a newer, modern form of it. And y'all don't get that. Y'all so much want to be entertained. Who's the most popular people on the plantation? The musicians, the boxers, the singers, and the preachers. Them the same most popular people right now. Right now. Still the same thing going on today, bro. The entertainers are the most famous people, the most popular people on the plantation, on a new plantation. Slavery is the choice is this. And I'm going to break that down and I'm going to get out of here. Slavery is a choice, right? That just means that you got to work or you don't eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't work legally or illegally, guess what's going to happen? Can't pay your bills. You're going up under that bridge. See, you don't understand the game that they play with you. 13th Amendment says slavery has been a slavery is abolished itself for punishment for a crime. So whenever you go to jail, whenever you commit a crime, you voluntarily put yourself back in slavery. They ain't teach you that in school. They just read over it. They ain't tell you that the breakdown of it is when you commit a crime, you go to jail, you lose all your rights as a citizen. You are now a slave. You're going to work for free. Free label. And if they give you 12 cent, 13 cent, 20 cent, here in Louisiana, you got to sign that away or you don't even get your good time. So you don't come home and have the time. You got to do all your time. So who, who going to go take that pay? I'm going to get home early. I got to get my parole. I'm trying to go home early. You know what I'm saying? But people with life sentences, they get their money because they, they ain't signing it over because they're going to be there forever. So why should I sign it? Also, slavery is a choice. Is this, right? On the plantation, 
I realized this when I was in prison. On the plantation, everybody had to work. The slaves. When I was in prison, everybody got a job. Everybody had to work. In the free world, everybody got a job. Everybody got to work. Whether it's legal or illegal. And if you don't, you're going to be under the bridge. You're not going to be able to pay your bills. You don't want to be able to feed yourself. So slavery is still in control right now. You just don't know you, you call it a job. It's not a job. It's a program. You're a slave. You're still in slavery today, period. It's just what it is. You don't go to work. You can't pay your bills. You can't eat. You forced to go to work. Nobody wants to get up and go to work. Nobody wants to get up and go to work. Nobody. You are forced to get up and go to work. If you don't go to work, your life is going to get bad real fast. You're going to start suffering and feeling the effects of not having money real fast. So they're not beating you with the whip no more. They're beating you with money. Money is capital. Capital, you live in a capitalistic country with they capitalizing off of you. They capitalize enough for the situation. They got to pay for everything. They don't want to give us our kids trade school because they know trade schools now. I can go and be my own contractor. I can work for myself. Now you're out of slavery because now you're a boss. Now you don't work for nobody. You work for yourself. So you get up and go to work when you want to go to work. But they don't want that for you. You're going to pay for that. And we're going to keep you in poverty to make sure you can't pay for you. We're going to keep you without a father to make sure we, he don't pass the skills down to you that he got. See what I'm saying? But they're going to pass all, everything that they got down to their kids. Their kids, no bankers. Their kids, see lawyers. Their kids, see doctors. They see judges. They see all types of stuff. Whatever they see, more than likely, they're going to go to that. They're going to teach them skills. Big Unc got this business going on. Cousin got that over there going on. Brother or sister, somebody I know. Friend got that going on over there. So they learn these skills through their people. You on the other hand, the only skill you got is 12th grade education. You got your GED. You got your diploma. You can't buy nothing with that diploma. You didn't pay for that. Therefore, you're not certified in any type of skill or any type of trade. Now you got to go to work. You're a day laborer. You're a mediocre nobody. You're a fucking average Joe. And everybody out here with Jordans is looking all good and don't even realize you're on a plantation with Jordans and Bentleys and fucking BMWs. Everybody got a BMW now riding around the plantation. And if you don't think it's a plantation, understand this. During slavery, when the slave got off work, he could go anywhere around the plantation and do his thing. But come tomorrow morning, he better have his ass back on that job. Same thing for you right now today. When you get out of work, when you clock out, go do what you want to do. Go around the whole city and do your thing. Go around the big plantation now. But come tomorrow morning, or the next day you got to be to work, you better be on that work or your life going to start suffering. So slavery is real, and it still exists right now today. Period. You ain't got to believe it. You living in it. Don't go to work and see. Don't sit back and get that welfare check. Don't go sign and put your kids on child support and get that all uh, that food stamps and the housing and all this stuff that. Don't do that and see what how your life suffers. You are forced to work. You're forced to work, bro. You're a slave. You know what I'm saying? And we vote these people in and they eating off of us. They eating off of the crime. They eating off of, you know, because they 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 paying to keep you in jail. They cost a certain amount of money every day to keep you in jail. They making money off of you being in jail. And we still vote these people in. You like slavery. We like it. We love it. We don't even see it as so plain and common and natural to us now. We're not slaves. We're employees. This is slavery by a different name, bro. Still in slavery. It doesn't even matter. You ain't got to believe it. I ain't make it up. I'm just telling you about it because most of y'all can't see, but everybody woke. Oh, man, there ain't no slaves. Don't go to work then and see, see what happens. They're going to whoop you with them bills. <laughs> They're going to beat you with that hunger pain in your belly. You got to go beg somebody for this. You might well stand on the corner with your cup, holding out, begging on the corner. Nobody going to do that. you forced to go back to work. They didn't teach you business. 
They didn't even teach you the laws, but you got to obey every law, even the laws you don't know about. How they expect for you to obey some or learn some or be a part of something and they ain't even teach you nothing. Like, what the fuck? But that's what we own. So, this is what I tell people, right? Because this is a solution, right? Make these politicians start opening up all these closed schools, put these teenagers in them, and give them trades. It's your money. You paying taxes. It's your fucking money. But if you ain't going to vote and tell these people what to do, or I'm not going to vote for you, they're not going to do nothing for you. Period. We can all get together and go down there and beg for them to put a park in our neighborhood. We can all go get together and beg for them to, you know, give money to the police to stop all the crime. Why you can't give beg for these motherfuckers to get, 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 put some money to the side so we can get skills so we ain't got to commit crime. We can get trades. We can go to school. We go back to school for a year, get a trade in electrician, a trade in computer repair, a trade in drafting, a trade in whatever the hell you want to get. It's our money. We pay taxes, bro. So we should be able to tell them what we want them to do with our portion of money. And if they don't want to do that, then I say what? We do our own tax. Just tax black people. 25 cent extra, 10 cent extra on everything. And put that shit toward the school so we can go back to school and get trades, bro. All this college stuff, that's, that's, I ain't got $60,000 to pay for no college. You know what I'm saying? But if we all put it in a pot, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't even speaking on reparations. I'm just saying right now, we could all go get to, get together with these people, man. Let's put a tax on us. We pay extra 10, 20 cents on everything. And we take that money and open these schools back up and get somebody in there teaching carpentry. Get somebody in there teaching welding. Get somebody in there teaching plumbing, electrician, and all these other different skills. Uh, roofing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, flooring and all other kind of stuff. Concrete mason, brick mason, you know what I'm saying? Why ain't nobody, why y'all ain't figured this out yet, bro? Why nobody figured this out yet? Even when you go tell them, they're not going to do it. And that's going to show you that they're not for you. Even your mayors, even your uh, city councilmen who look like you, they're not going to do nothing for you because they get paid a certain amount of money not to do nothing for you. So when you go to them and you tell them all the stuff that you can figure out now that I said it, they're going to look at you like that. Hmm? All right, man, I'm going to get to you in a minute, man. Just stand to the side. Y'all keep, y'all make sure we don't, we keep, we demonize him. Y'all make sure we keep him out of we can't do that. Mouse is going to whoop us. Mouse is going to beat us if we go and try to break out the slave, the slave the plantation. If we do that, then we're going to have slaves running free. So this is what I say, right? This is another thing we can do. Every time you get paid, put you 10% back. If you can, put 20% back. Because the thing is this. You pay your light bill, you pay your water bill, you paid your cable bill, you paid your phone bill, you paid all your bills, right? You didn't pay yourself. So you never have money for yourself. The whole week you just spun laboring for all these different bills you paid. You paid all these people, but you ain't got nothing for you. But you got some shoes, some clothes, some eyeglasses, some Michael Jordans. That's how you pay yourself with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, billionaire. He ain't gonna spend no money with you. Spend some money with yourself. Pay yourself. Save that money up. And at the end of the year, take that money and invest it in something. In the next year, take that money and invest it in something else. In the next year, take that money and invest it in something else. You got different streams of income coming now from all types of different places. Every year, you got a different stream. So you throughout this time, while you saving this money, you supposed to be coming up with a plan. What I'm gonna do with this money? What I'm gonna invest this money in? My partner doing trucking. I got another partner. I got so many partners doing trucking. They making a bag off of it. You can make a bag off anything legally, but you don't have money to invest because you're spending it out with everybody and ain't doing nothing for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You ain't showing the kids how to save money. You're not showing the kids how to use money to work for them. How they gonna know? Creating a cycle. You, you're not creating it. You're continuing the cycle. We don't know. We don't know business owners. But hell, why are we not business owners? Trump tried to give us almost a billion dollars. Y'all turn it down. We don't want that. We just want Biden. Biden said, we'll talk to it about the election. He ain't talking about it yet. I ain't going to talk about it. I ain't going to talk about it. 
Well, you turn down this man because this man a racist. The whole while before he ran for office, he wasn't a racist at all. Most most of the black superstars and all these people here, they were supporting him. They was with him. He got him in all these people's songs. All these rapper songs got Donald Trump name in them. And then as soon as he go to running for president, they say he a racist because he wouldn't allow some black people in his apartment complex. I wouldn't allow him in my need. I got an upscale apartment complex and I know y'all on some Section 8 shit. Why would I want y'all in my apartment complex? I wouldn't bring you in there. I'm an investor. I'm not trying to lose no money. But at the end of the day, if he was going to give you some free money, you turned it down, then went back and scammed for it on the PPP loan. Come on, bro. Now you're facing jail time because that's our nature. We'll do some illegal shit before we do some shit that makes sense for us on the political side, man. Politics is supposed to give you something. You vote for people because they do stuff for you. They give you something. If you're not getting something, then because politics is pay to play. You know, quid, quote, pro. Why would they say it? It's pay to play. You do this for me, I vote for you. You don't do this for me, I don't vote for you. When we going to get it? So at the end of the day, like, you know, stop letting the media tell us what to do, who to vote for. Democrats ain't for us, bro. They not for us. Look at our communities. They Biden just gave these fucking illegal, these immigrants or these three people from Afghanistan two, three hundred thousand dollars apiece. They not even citizens. And yet still he won't even mention reparations. But this y'all do. I told y'all get off that sports shit. Your team loses. Cut the team, man. Especially you got money on it. You got skin in the game, bro. It ain't even about the sport. You got skin in the game, bro. This man supposed to do something for you, bro. First week, his first week, what he voted? The Asian law, the LGBT this. What he did for you. And without you, he wouldn't have got in there. That's why he got the black lady. Because you know y'all emotional about shit like that. Black people, oh yeah, they for us. Name a black politician that did something for you right now. Drop it in the comments. You can't. Oh, Ice Cube, he'll sell out. Ice Cube went to them people and tried to get something for you. Ice Cube, rich. Rich beyond whatever you can imagine. That man ain't have to do that. That man stood, stood, put himself on the cross. And y'all crucified him. That's what y'all do to people who really for you. Just because you're for the, the other team. You're for the Dallas Cowboys, and he's with the Saints. He's with the Green Bay Packers. Since he ain't with your team, you just automatically voted against your own best interest, bro. How you? Nobody else would have ever did that. Matter of fact, they pay politicians to do the Asians, the Hispanics, the whites. They got lobby, lobbyists. They pay lobbyists, and they lobby these people to do what they want to do with money. It's legal. But since you're not going to put no money in the game, you're never going to get nothing out of the game because you get your vote up free and you don't have no money to play. So at the end of the day, bro, that's all on you. So that's pretty much what I had to say, man. Y'all be good.